Hey guys, how you doing? I'm gonna do a uh, short little video here on the fabrication of the spindle for the rear A-arm suspension on my Baja Bug. So the first thing that I, uh, I'm going to do, or the first thing that I did, I already did it, is I made this template. Now this template, when I made this template, it had nothing to do with any of the spindle or anything like that. I just laid it out to properly locate the mounting holes for the bearing assembly and then it's got the uh, the proper ears on it for the caliper. So this fits around the bearing housing, it's got the bolt holes there and it's got the proper location of the mounting points for the caliper. That's what this template does. Then what I did is I cut out a template this is a circular template that will just fit inside my wheel. Um, it's a it's a 15 inch wheel and the room that I have, this is 12 and a half inches in diameter. Once I had this, I transferred the bolt hole pattern to it. It is a pattern with the right size hole for the bearing assembly and it has the uh, bolt holes for the bearing, the bearing housing. And, I, and with this, I know that all of my connection points for the Himes has to take place inside of here because if I go outside of here, I'll be hitting the wheel. So then with that, I created this, which is basically a hybrid of the two. And what I did with this, this is the same diameter as the one I just showed you. It's got the, uh, it's got the outside diameter that will fit in the wheel. It has the bolt holes on here. Then what I did is I cut these three pieces which represent um, the connection points for the Himes, which basically it means that the Himes, the Himes need this much width and basically this much height. I added a little bit extra on there just for layout purposes, but basically it's, it's roughly a two inch square that the Himes need to be able to connect. So first thing that I did is I laid these out, keeping them inside the circle. And because I'm gonna have the lower control arm, I'm gonna have the two himes that come down at the bottom. Those are gonna be the ones that keep the uh, spindle from twisting. And then at the top, there's gonna be one heim that comes down. That's gonna be the one that keeps the spindle from leaning in or leaning out. So what I did with these is, I put them as much to the edge as I could and as far out as I could. So what I wanted to do for strength is create a triangle, obviously, and I wanted to spread everything out as far as I could. Then once I had that, I took this template, I put it on top of all of that, because with this template, I can rotate it and find a a mounting position for the caliper that will be as less intrusive as possible to the connecting points for the Himes. So if you look at my final template here, which is a mess, this template here has the three connecting points for the Himes, and then I actually had to trace it twice, so it's pretty confusing right here, but I had rotated the caliper up to about here, which allows me, when I when I cut this piece out of metal, I'm going to uh, weld on some stiffeners here. The stiffeners are going to strengthen everything. They're also going to come down to all the Heim locating points, and that's what the Himes are going to bolt, to, what the Himes are going to bolt to. Um, I, I was trying to find a place where I could set the caliper where it would not interfere with the uh, the piece of the stiffener that runs across here and I think I think I did that with this one right here so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut the excess out of here put this on here one more time and see how it fits I just went and traced this out it it looks it looks pretty crazy right now but when this is uh, when this is made out of metal when you see this this grow it'll, it'll make more sense I've got my bolt holes lined up um, these are my locating points for the himes. These are my mounting ears for the caliper. Um, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but 
this will simulate the steel that I'm going to have to weld in here for a stiffener and for the mounting plates. And you can see that this one is going to go right here and it will clear the caliber, which is excellent. So what I'm going to do now, the next step here will be I'm going to go out into the garage where I actually have the wheel flipped upside down sitting on the, on the garage floor and I have the other micro stub out in the garage. I'm going to put that micro stub bolted into the wheel and then I'm going to set this in there and I'm going to make sure that all of these corners actually clear the wheel. I bolted the, the micro stub into the wheel. I actually bolted it with the lug nuts so that I know that it's center. My caliper's in here floating around. So here's my template. Uh, let me sneak it in here. Everything on here looks like it'll work. So what's going to happen at this point is I'm going to start to cut this out of the metal and then tack weld my uh, stiffeners on here. And then at that point I'll start figuring out where I can locate my himes and I'll see if I can spread them out a little bit more to distribute the weight or whatnot. So, this right here might not even be the final design because as I get the himes in place, I need I want to get them as far apart both this way and this way as possible for strength. Um, so this being my first template, I'll cut a piece of metal out, I'll start getting some webbing in here, um, and I'll actually start bolting a couple himes in here to see if it looks like I can spread things out or push them down a little bit more. But but this will be a good starter.
so what I did, I've got Himes, just regular three quarter inch Himes, that are gonna be going in all three positions here. Um, but what I did, what I ended up doing is, typically, if you were installing a Heim in a situation like this, you would use these, which are called straight spacers. The straight spacers would be mounted inside the Heim, so it would be something like that. Now the problem with that is, that makes it so that the connection point for your Heims, which is, which is this part, has to be wide enough for both of those spacers to go in there. Now what that would do, that would make the mounting point of my Heim have to come in about a half inch on each end. Now, because everything on this spindle has to take place inside the wheel, that would be, bring my uh, Heim mounting locations in, which would make it not as strong. The, the closer I get these Heims to each other, whichever way, whether it be top or bottom, or left to right, the closer they are together, the weaker they're going to be, the more stress they're going to take. So I was trying to push everything out as far as I possibly could. So what I did is rather than have the, uh, the straight spacers in here, I'm going to mount my Himes directly in the metal like that. Now, what that's going to do, it's going to make it so that I don't have a lot of room for the Heim to, uh, to pivot. However, it doesn't have to because the only, the only angle change that this is going to get from side to side is when I set up the towing, which for the most part is going to be as straight as I can get it. I just want to be able to make minor corrections so that when I, let's say, fabricate the lower control arm, if that is not perfectly parallel with the connection connection points on the chassis side, I'll, I'll need to make some directions, some changes with these Himes. So just this little tiny bit will give me enough to be able to make those corrections. However, the plus side is having these Himes be able to mount uh, without much space allows me to push the Himes out as far as possible. Uh, this might not be making sense just yet, but when I show you this installed inside the wheel, you'll more than likely see what I'm talking about. So what I did to be able to do that is, typically this Heim would have a, a three-quarter inch hole in the middle, which it does, but if you look, you'll see that I have, I machined a little Delrin bushing that went in there. The outside diameter is three-quarters of an inch, the inside diameter is half inch. So it makes it so that I can take a half inch bolt and put it right in there. The reason I did that is I don't want to stick a three quarter inch bolt in here just so that I can bolt it onto my spindle. Typically when you use these straight spacers, they are machined for a half inch bolt on the inside. So you would slide this inside the heim, that would be the three quarter inch outside diameter, and then you would use a, a half inch bolt. I wanted to do that to this Heim, but I didn't want to use the straight spacers, so I just pressed in a little uh, Delrin piece that I machined, which is great, because now, now it facilitates a half inch bolt. So I made the spindle. One thing that I had to be really careful of is, I had to make mounting tabs for the, um, the rear caliper, which is right here. This mounts on here. Now these tabs had to be a couple of things. First thing, they had to be relatively thick. Most of this spindle is made out of eighth inch steel. Um, the caliper mounting points are made out of three eighths, and that's because they are threaded. That's three eighths by 24 threaded right there to hold the caliper in. There's no nut that goes on the backside because the backside here is only maybe a quarter inch off the rotor of the micro stub. So there was no room to have a nut back there, which is fine. But, so I ended up making this out of 3 8 steel so that I've got plenty of surface in there for the uh, 3 8 by 24 bolt to thread and tap into. Um, the other reason that I made this out of 3 8 is it's, the caliper is mounting to this and it has to be extremely strong because if I lock up the brakes, all of that torque is going to come through these two tabs. 
So I wanted them to be more than just eighth inch so that there was no risk of them uh, twisting or anything like that. So if you look at this, and I'll show you when I have this installed, how intricate I had to be with these measurements because there's a lot of things that that caliper had to clear. If you look at some of these welds, like that's a, basically a spot weld in there. That I made with my flux core welder. Some of the welds inside here were done with the flux core welder. Um, these were done with the flux core welder. However, flux core welding is, is good welding and I, I do a lot of my welding with flux core welding. However, the, uh, the filler metal for flux core welding is not as strong as like a, a pure piece of filler rod for um, TIG welding. So because of that, the TIG welding is stronger. Not because of the heat or the process or anything like that, just the fact that the, the filler metal for TIG welding is stronger than my uh, filler metal for my flux core. So I did some welding on this with the flux core because it's, it's really fast, really easy. I did some of the lower intense points like down here with the flux core and that's fine. But when it came to these uh, caliper brackets, I TIG welded all of those because those really needed to be strong, like unquestionably strong. So I, uh, I TIG welded those. And then I also, just to make sure that the, the body of the spindle itself is as strong as it can be, um, from the outside I TIG welded all of this with, the, uh, with my TIG. Um, that gives me confidence that, that this is, is very, very strong, at least as strong as it can be. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assemble this on the micro stub. Then we'll go over a couple of things. Then I'm going to actually take the, uh, the micro stub with the assembled spindle and I'm going to mount it inside the wheel so that I can show you some of the tolerances. Okay, so here it is installed on the micro stub. It's got the three bolts here, which are actually holding it to the micro stub. It's got the caliper mounted on those three eighths inch pieces of metal that I told you about. Um, I don't, I don't have the top hymen yet because I don't have it. I ordered some, but they're not in yet. On the bottom here. These are the two himes that the lower control arm is going to bolt to. The lower control arm will have, have these um, square bungs welded into it. And these will, these will thread onto the, the lower himes and that's where I'll be able to adjust the length, which is what will let me change the, uh, the toe in on the rear. And there'll be, of course, one of these mounted at the top as well. Um, now, if you see, I did a couple things like when I fabricated this piece running across here, I, uh, I tapered it down here. I actually did that to all of these. I gave them a little taper down. Now, one reason that I did that is so that when you put the micro stub axle in, this metal, this metal here is two inches. Um, and that actually fit. Oh, that's heavy. This actually fit. It didn't have to be trimmed down like that. This fit regardless. Um, but that was two things. Number one, it was just unattractive. It didn't look good. It looked, it looked like the guy who fabricated it didn't care. Um, and it also made tolerances around this really tight. So. Trim these down, radius, all the edges. I think it looks good. It looks like the person who fabricated it put a lot of time and effort into it, which I did. And as a fabricator, if another fabricator sees this piece, I want them to see things like 
that I radiused the edges here, that I did step downs in here. Sure, I did it so that there's a little bit more room around the stub axle. Sure, I did it because it'll make the uh, end result a little bit light, a little bit lighter because there's less metal there. Um, but mainly I just did it because as a fabricator, I want the things that I make to look good. Um, and so I radius those out. I even radiused some out here because it was extra metal that wasn't necessary and I didn't think it was adding any strength. So if you're fabricating something out there, if, if you're a fabricator watching this video, you know what I'm talking about. If you're watching this video and you're a future fabricator, then I just want you to, I just want to let you know that if you do little extra touches like that, people will notice. They'll see this and they'll say, oh, that's nice. You know, whoever built that, they're really putting some time into that. But anyways, when I was making these brackets for the caliper, I had to be really careful. This, this rotor doesn't really have a lot of room inside the wheel. So I had to make this caliper so that it was pretty snug to the uh, rotor so that I had room for the wheel to pass this. And I'll show you again when I have this actually mounted in the wheel. So I had to make these tabs pretty accurate so that the, uh, the caliper is only like maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe an eighth off of the rotor for clearance. That keeps it as, as in tight as possible. And then I also had to set the proper elevation with these tabs so that the caliper is riding, I don't think you'll be able to see that, but I'll see. So that the caliper is riding equal distance up and below of this caliper so that as, I might be able to see it there, as the uh, brake pads wear, it will be even. So I really had to take a lot of things into account when I made this. But so far, so far it seems pretty good. Um, another thing I'll point out is when I was making this spindle, because I'm only making the one now, and if it works, it probably won't be maybe a month till I make the other one. When I made all of these parts, I made paper templates and I kept them in the basement. So when I go to lay out my next spindle, all I really have to do is take all these paper templates that I have, trace them, cut out the metal, break it up, and weld it in place. So I took care when I was, when I was fabricating this one to do everything that I could so that when I do in like a month have to make the other one, it won't be like I'm starting from scratch because I want the driver's side spindle and the passenger side spindle to basically be exactly the same. So now I'm gonna take this over to the wheel and put it in there and mount it up. So here's the wheel actually mounted inside. Here's the spindle actually mounted inside the wheel. You can see it actually sits inside, which is, which is really good performance wise. You can see the, uh, the calipers actually ride really close to the inside of the wheel. There's about an eighth inch, maybe three sixths of a three sixteenths of an inch of a gap between the caliper and the outside of the, uh, the wheel. So when I was making these uh, caliper brackets, I had to be really careful to keep the caliper in as close as I could. But I could only go so close because if you go too close, these bolts, these bolts stick up a little bit farther than the roller, rotor does the bolts, the bolt heads would interfere with the uh, brake pads. So that was that was what I had to do is make sure that I stayed outside of these bolts, yet inside of the wheel. But I got it. It works. Um, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. But really, this is the just the very, very, very beginning of it. Now that I have this, I can take my wheel and tire, set it up, mock it up exactly where I want it to be on the bug setting my my wheel base and my track width um, and then once I have that I can I actually start taking measurements for my lower control arm so that's going to be the next step is to make the lower control arm so thanks for watching this video guys I hope you liked it and I hope it helps you if someday you try making your own spindles thanks for watching bye